So, but this is the important thing about this is this is on private lands. This is not on government lands. Essentially on farm lands where we brought in what is called as tree based agriculture in the last 27 years. Initially we used to call it, call it agroforestry. But uh, then it fell under the forest department and we came under so many limitations. So we just had to rename it to fall under agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a tree based agriculture and it's going very well. And we're doing this in the Kaveri Basin. It is 83,000 square kilometers of land, 5.2 million farmers, uh, both between Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Puducherry. So here we are envisioning to plant 2.42 billion trees, but all on farmland. And we have evolved this method of how a farmer can grow his regular crops with trees in between, which will become an extra income and becomes the source of soil regeneration. That you use the soil, uh, you use the tree foliage to enhance the soil quality. So today, I can say about uh, 130,000 farmers, their lands have gone to average uh, organic content in Tamil Nadu was 0.68%. Today, these farmers have well over 3 to 4 percent organic content. Water tables have come up. The incredible thing is, I know you were saying as a very large example. I always believe that at least 50 to 100 acres minimum you must plant to get this water table up. But to our incredible surprise, five acres if you plant, water table comes up. This is the incredible nature of, uh, you know, the southern plateau, that five acres I see water tables have come up significantly and it stays there. So uh, right now this moment, Save Soil moment worldwide is because uh, not a single nation in the world has the 3% minimum average organic content that is necessary to keep the soil organisms alive for future generations. On an average, 27,000 species of organisms are dying or going extinct per year. At this rate, Whatever we may be doing in individual land areas will not work because uh, the soil organisms or microorganisms are a global phenomenon. They function as one big uh, life phenomenon. So without the support of all around, just one place we are doing it well, it is good. But still it doesn't really work like that. It doesn't really solve the problem for future generations. And anyway, one part of the world is far more uh, fertile than the rest of the world, whoever has the big guns on that day, they will come and take it anyway. It will happen. Once there are food shortages, people will come and take each of this land. In the last 50 years, uh, in the last 30 years, I'm sorry, in the last 50 years, 30 wars have happened in Africa, out of which 27 wars are for fertile lands. They fought mainly to take each of those fertile lands. It's not the end of the world, but it's going to be extremely painful. And because of this 27,000 species lost per year, right now if you attempt regenerating the soil on the planet with the right kind of policies across the world, in 10 to 15 years time we can make a significant turnaround. But if you allow this to go beyond 30 to 40 years, after that if we try to regenerate, it is said it will take 150 to 200 years. So this will be an incredibly pain painful phase for humanity and you know, nearly a quarter or a third of the population may die because of these things. More than that, the chaos that will happen when there are food shortages, civilizations will collapse. They are expecting dozens of civil wars by 2035. And famines will not, famine means people think it will happen in Africa or somewhere else. No, they are saying Illinois will have a famine by 2035. So, this is where we are going. Because the average uh, organic content in the world has come down significantly. In India, average is 0.68%, which is very, very low. This is one of the most fertile lands. Uh, Goda, very Kaveri, Ganga has yielded, you know. It has bred a whole civilizations. But today we have brought it to this place. So what we are striving for is that everywhere in the world, as there are urban laws in a city, see, if you have 10,000 square feet of land here, you cannot build a 10,000 square feet building. There is some law, six, 7,000 you have to build and leave some space. But if you have 100 acres of land, you can plow every inch of the land. If you want to turn it into a desert in the next 10, 20 years time, there is no law. 
So we are trying to bring a law, incentive-based law, that if you own agricultural land, it's your responsibility to have minimum of 3% organic content. So for this, initially, it takes incentives. Then once they reach that 3%, there is a carbon sequestering that's happening because of that. So we must crack the carbon market. The next thing is, suppose, let's say a fruit or a vegetable, let's say an apple. This comes from 1% organic content, means what micronutrients it has. 3% means what it has. Everybody knows this, there is enough science about it. So with that much extra micronutrients, what are the health benefits you get? What are the preventive health benefits you get? What are the benefits in terms of less stress in the healthcare system? What are the benefits in terms of number of mandates not being lost? Or, uh, you know, a population which is more healthy naturally is more productive and more creative. All these benefits are there. Suppose it's 6% organic content, it'll sit on a higher shelf in the marketplace. So the farmer should get three levels of incentives. One directly from the administrations, next from the carbon market, next from the marketplace. If we don't do this now and enhance farmer's income, because uh, we have made some kind of a survey in the country where right now 62% of the uh, population is in farming. Not even 2% of the farmers want their children to become farmers. This is uh, one thing is the lack of income. It's not lucrative enough to stay there. Another thing is uh, this compulsory education. Boys and girls who don't go on the field early on, after 18, they don't even have a physic to go and survive on the land, you know, to do something hard work on the land is not possible because they have spent 18 years in school or till they are 18 they are in school. So this needs to be looked at also. But the most important thing is a farmer should earn as much as a doctor, engineer, lawyer, whatever drives people into the urban centers. They must earn at least that much. Only then we will have farmers in the next 30 years. Otherwise we will be in a serious peril of not having enough people who know how to farm. I'm, uh, my, my experience of things is, even people who have done MSc in agriculture cannot grow a single crop.